Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I will share with you how to design and animate this kinetic typography using Adobe After Effects. So let's go. Cool, so let's start. First, let's select the text tool in Adobe Illustrator and let's write a letter. I'm going to use the letter A. Now let's right click and create outlines. Let's change the text color to a light gray and go to Effects, 3D and Materials and select Extrude and Bevel. On the Object tab, let's make the depth value at 100. Let's activate the bevels and make it 5%. Then let's go to Materials and choose a material. And I'm going to use an iron brushed material. By the way, if you want to know how to import new materials into Adobe Illustrator, I made a video about it. The link is on this video description. Cool, we have now a 3D letter with a material applied to it and we are good to go. The next step is to export this as a 3D object so we can import it into Adobe After Effects. So let's go to Window and select Asset Export. Select our 3D letter and drag and drop it over the Asset Export window. Give it a name, choose the GLTF format and click Export. Save it in your desired location and let's jump into After Effects. Before we import the 3D model, we need to create a new composition. Let's name it Kinetic Type 014. Make it 1080 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, 4 seconds duration and press OK. Perfect. Now let's double click over the project window to import our 3D object. Press Open and that's it. Now drag and drop the GLTF file into the composition and it will open a model settings window. Here we can change the scale of our object, although we can also do this later in the object properties. So just press OK. And here you go, a 3D object inside After Effects. Now press R for the rotation property and using the orientation values try to find a great perspective for our 3D letter. And if your letter needs to be a little thinner, press S for scale. Deactivate the proportional scale constraints and scale it down in the Z axis. Now let's press P to open the position properties and let's mark our first keyframe. Let's move our letter on an X axis, then move it the timeline needle one second. And let's move our letter again, but this time backwards. Let's move our timeline to two seconds and copy and paste the first keyframe. Then while holding the Alt key, click over the position stopwatch and let's write a quick expression. It will be loop out and then just a semicolon. So this way the animation will loop forever. And now it's when things will get interesting. First, move the timeline needle to the first frame. Then select our 3D object and press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate this layer. And click over the stopwatch to remove any keyframes in this layer. And delete the existing expression. Because guess what, we will write a new one. Let's start to create some variables. The first one will be delay frames and let's make it equals 3 and semicolon. Anyway, to make sure you understand everything we are doing now, I will explain line by line. So this first one sets the number of frames by which each layer will be delayed. Cool, so let's make another variable. Y offset per layer equals 40. So this one sets the vertical offset increment for each layer. And let's write another one. Main layer equals, and using the pick whip tool, let's select our first 3D layer the one with all the keyframes. So this line selects a specific layer from our current composition. This layer will be used as a reference for calculating delays and offsets. Let's start creating another variable, let's name it total delay, and it equals frames to time, open parenthesis, delay frames, times, open parenthesis, index, minus main layer, period, index, close parenthesis, close parenthesis and semicolon. This line calculates the total delay time for the current layer. The delay is based on the layer's index in the composition stack. The formula delay frames times open parenthesis index main layer period index close parenthesis calculates how many frames the current layer is delayed relative to the main layer. Frames to time converts this frame count into a time value. I hope this is making sense, I'm trying to explain this as best I can. And guess what? We need to write a few more variables. And another one. Let's name it delay time. It equals math period max open parenthesis time minus total delay comma discomp period display start time close parenthesis semicolon. And what does this line do? This line ensures that the time after applying the delay doesn't go before the start of our composition. It calculates the time from the current frame minus the total delay. It ensures these calculations are made at the start of the time of the composition. It's cool. So let's write another quick one. Total Y offset equals Y offset per layer times index minus main layer period index close parenthesis semicolon. 
This calculates the total vertical offset for the current layer based on its index. Each layer is offset on a Y axis by a multiple of the Y offset per layer. Ok, we are almost there. Just bear with me. We just have a couple of more lines to do. The next one is delayed position equals main layer period transform period position period value add time open parenthesis delayed time close parenthesis semicolon. This line retrieves the position of the primary layer at a delayed time. It synchronizes the current layer position with the primary one at a different point in time. And finally, the last code line for our expression. Open brackets, delayed position, open brackets again, zero, close brackets, comma, delayed position again, open brackets, one, close brackets, plus, total y offset, comma, delayed position, open brackets, two, close brackets, and close brackets again, and semicolon. This final line applies the calculated delayed position to the current layer, adding the total of the y offset to the y coordinate at a delayed time. The layers x and z positions remain the same as the primary layer. That's it. Eight beautiful lines of code. Anyway, now we will see why this is worth it. With our layer selected, press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate it and see the magic of this expression happening. And keep duplicating one layer until you have enough. And what do you think? This is great, right? Imagine how long it will take to make all this by hand. This is perfect. Our 3D model is done, the animation is finished, the last thing to do is to light our scene. The good thing about having 3D inside After Effects is we can use After Effects lights, which is great. It could be better, but it's ok. So let's right click over our timeline and go to New Light. And on the settings, on the light type, select Point Light. Leave it at 100% and just press OK. Let's position our light in the top left corner of our composition and adjust it until we have a nice look. Then for the darker spots in our scene, let's create a new light. Make it Ambient Light, start with 20% intensity and press OK. If you want to adjust the intensity of any of the lights, just double click over them and the light setting window will pop up. You can change it here. And that's pretty much it. Let's make it solid for the background. I'm going to make it dark grey and move it behind all the layers. Then let's create an adjustment layer. And let's go to Effects, Color Correction and select Curves. Adjust your curves to add a little bit more contrast. And we finished it. Let's add it to the render queue, render it and enjoy it. If you share it in your socials, remember to tag me. I always reshare everything you guys do. Have a great day, a great life and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye bye.